Okay. All meetings of order. Is there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Uh, I've got two uh, additional items. Okay. Um, the I'd like it to inform the board a little bit about uh, three acre stormwater permitting rule and the status of that uh, change to the state stormwater permitting system. Okay. And uh, we have the operation and maintenance agreement with the Lamoille Regional Solid Waste Management District for the operation of the transfer station, not the compost facility. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Um, I would like to um, talk about uh, getting permission to display an inclusive statement on the field. Okay. I'm hoping for an update on uh, line road sort of current status. Sure. And what the plan is. We can put that under rope form and rope. Okay. Anything else? If not, and we have no meeting minutes. Uh, I grabbed those off the printer before oh. they were done printing, so I've got a couple print copies, but you've received all received it over email. Oh, okay. So is the board prepared to approve the July 1st meeting minutes? So moved, Mr. Chairman. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Those three, you get four. This will be closed out. Uh, I should have it pretty well for next year, next time, um, regular meeting office. See the nice new tax bills have been set up. Yes, yeah, so those went out from Thursday. We got a few calls today. Okay. Question increase and the state being set. The doctor can get which is not one of those. Now, do we meet the deadline on schedule for our yes. normal? Okay. Okay. You know, we do on August 12th. Okay. And I need to draw a list of the current delivery of taxes. And that currently is at $126,572. Is that more than normal? That's pretty normal, yeah. Just normal. Okay. We've got quite a few people that made arrangements. They pay so much more. Okay. You sent it to the attorney in December. Cool. That's all. That's all you got. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Um, I would got one question. You can do anything special on my state for your birthday? No, I'm not. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted anybody to know if it's your birthday. Uh -oh. okay. Are we going to sing happy birthday? That's up to you. It would be on TV land. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, you want to give the road commissioner? Yeah. Um, so, Brian Krause's been out of town. Uh, Jason has been filling in and doing a you know, good job of it. Mm -hmm. um, things are going pretty well. Uh, recently, uh, we approved uh, some maintenance for
for VASA to do a couple, doing a little bit of maintenance on some class four roads in town. Um, I've received a couple complaints about one of the roads and I'm investigating that with, uh, when Brian's available, I'm gonna get his help and investigate that. Um, but I don't, but we'll see where it goes. Um, mine road, uh, the board brought that to uh, my attention, or a reminder again about checking up on mine road, and I went out there, uh, and it was in much the same state when we had visited over the winter. It hasn't really caught up with where we'd like it to be at this state. Uh, so we're going to be following up with Tom and making arrangements to remove uh, his structures and improvements from our right of way. How did we leave it with him over the winter? Did it, we didn't put a time on it? Our, this is one of the things we'd really like about the new permitting uh, for work in the right of way is our permits are pretty static. Uh, the way they're written right now of you have a permit or you don't uh, and so we're very reluctant to make to issue a permit or something for uh, a temporary structure because it, it's not built into our process to handle a temporary structure so we were trying to do that make that work with our existing permits of that we were not going to interrupt him in the middle of sugaring season, but when sugaring season was complete, we were expecting him to you know, work with us to clear out. So uh, he'll get out of it right away. Right. And he has not done that yet. No. Last time we brought it up some months ago, Doug is suggesting um, uh, issuing an injunction against him? Seeking an injunction. Seeking an injunction. What would that entail? What does that do? Oh, it would, it would be a lawyer, you know. Um, I guess on the same thing. Do you, do you have his promise that he's going to remove this stuff? We do. Is it right? I'd have to check with Brian Crowsey about uh, what Tom actually signed and agreed to, but we have we have his commitment that he understood where it, that the state of the road and what we were giving him permission for was to finish out the season and not to finish out the triggering season yeah right uh you know that we weren't going to interrupt we weren't going to make him move it in the middle of winter but you know conditions are fine now it, it should be moved I, uh, sort of, I sort of don't understand why the, the, the act of grace, you know, well, maybe he shouldn't have been there to start out with. But I, I understand it's gone by, but, uh, you know, it's like uh, taking over your house and then saying, well, uh, I don't have another place to go to, uh, you know, you could stay. Pardon me. In Pardon this me. case, yeah. uh, in this case, we felt that getting his voluntary compliance was worth it um, you know that if we were able to get him to voluntarily move everything uh, without us having to go and get an injunction or uh, but we're in July like, now and it's not gone so it, it's he it obviously is not voluntarily yeah. complied it, it is not worked out and if we're not careful we're going to be back up against winter again and he still hasn't buried the power line? I don't believe so. It is not powered. Right, but he's but gonna power it up come springtime. Well, it's in our right away. We could send a town crew out and they just rip it out. I'm, I believe at this point, uh, we've had the conversation with Morrisville, and I don't believe that Morrisville would power it again mm -hmm. uh, in its current state. But, I mean, part of the Part of my concern is that there was that power line there that was live. There was a groomer that went over it. And um, I, think we're, I think it's very fortunate that nobody got hurt. But um, that was, that's a really 
scary situation. And I think, I think we've got to push this guy as hard as we can to get out of our right way with whatever tool we have. He's, he's nearly killed somebody out there, and he's had all this time since the ground is thawed and hard enough to get out of our right way. I mean, the fact that we're being too tough here, but I, no. I think we've got to take the next step. I think it's good to know who you're dealing with. Yeah, I think it's obvious at this point that seeking the voluntary compliance yeah. didn't work out the way we had hoped it and would. Would it have more clout going through the owners of the property? Uh, the owners of the property have been well, I mean, looped we, in and communicated with. Uh, it, when we, I, I think it will be helpful if we're seeking an injunction against Tom, if any action that we're seeking against Tom will also inform BASF uh, about our actions. It'll, for one, it'll affect them uh, and their use of the property if Tom is their custodian can no longer you know, operate and do some of the things he's been doing that we've allowed inside, inside our right of way. Um, it's going to affect their use of the property too, but. So could we have our attorney send a letter to both of them indicating a 30 day, you know, is going to be complied with by 30, and within 30 days or we're going to start the injunction process? Yeah, I, I think that would be a, a good next step. Yeah. Maybe just a letter from our attorney would be enough to get them moving without going through the court. And I stand by what I said. Look, take it out. All of us here, if we had somebody that built a camp or something on our property, it was wholly on our property, we go either tell them to take it down or we're going to take it down ourselves. That's what I would do. Somebody built a piece of property on my property. I think if we were cautious, as is kind of a normal methodology in getting a person's um, promise that they would do something and we avoided some costs, uh, now that it hasn't turned out so well, I still don't think we ought to be getting ourselves into the litigation position that we're trying to avoid bef before. So what do you recommend? The letter. The letter. Yeah. That still gives us room if we can, you know, we're not going to give a lot of uh, faith now, but uh, that gives us enough room if we can obtain voluntary compliance. If Tom will remove this, then. What happens if we have no voluntary compliance? Then we start the injunction process. Nobody has a stomach to go. Just remove it from our right of way? We could ask our attorney if he thought that, if they, he or she thought that was a good idea. Okay. Fair enough. They think we could, uh, it'll be okay, and then we need to do it. And just move it on. I mean, if we get an answer real quick from our attorney, he's already promised to remove it, and he hasn't. So then this is our next course mm -hmm. of action. Yeah. Keep us in the loop on yeah. what our attorney says. Okay. Anything else? I think that's it for the roads. Anybody got any questions? I, I wanted to ask what was the, the NASA fourth class mm -hmm. road improvements? Is that what you said? Yes. Uh, they were on a couple fourth class roads they wanted to do. Uh, pretty basic road maintenance from the sounds of it, of, you know, a little bit of grading, uh, making sure the water was flowing off the roadway. Um, Which roads? Hoag and I don't recall the other one off the top of my head. 
Is Brian Krause, do you know, is, is it on his schedule to paint sheriffs on Railroad Street? Uh, we did paint the sheriffs on Railroad Street uh, recently. Okay, great. Thanks. Haven't been down uh, for a few days. Okay. Great. Anybody else? Thank you, Brian. Uh, is there any planning commission report? Uh, I don't have anything from the Planning Commission yet. I know they're approaching the finish of their report on Class 4 roads, uh, but I didn't receive the final report from them yet. Okay, good. I guess get into your report, and the first thing up is the request from trees. So, uh, the the Moyle County Special Investigation Unit and Child Advocacy Center is asking Johnson for a contribution under our appropriations. So this is uh, related to some of the law enforcement and other things that work that goes on. You can help me out a little bit on uh, the separation, but this is not Sheriff's Department law enforcement. Uh, this is a, uh, a third party organization that's related to the work that they do there. Um, and they are asking communities around the Moyle County for uh, donations for their operations. Um, and it is 2,200 for the annual request for Johnson. Um, you know, the normal process, as you remember, is that a, an organization that that seeking appropriations can ask the select board directly or they can circulate a petition to get on the ballot. Um, and I think it's pretty common for organizations to first come before the select board. Also that way the select board is familiar with the organization when the petition is being circulated. So we have Tracy joining us. If you want to say a couple words. So I'm the executive director at the Special Investigation Unit. I joined them um, just over a year ago. And um, when I came on to this position, um, most of the work had been done about getting town contributions. Um, our current state's attorney, Todd Shove, was the first executive director of the Special Investigations Unit. He's the one who came up with the formula based on the 2010 census population. Um, and prior to myself coming on, um, they were able to get eight out of the ten towns we serve um, to contribute. Johnson and Waterville are the last two towns um, that we serve that aren't currently um, giving us funds. Um, as far as the Moyle County Sheriff's Department, I know you do fund them. Um, we are a separate entity, though they do investigations for us. Um, we're two separate entities. Um, we actually get um, state funds. Most of our program is run by state funds. Um, it's under the Act 1 um, that was enacted after the um, Brooke Bennett um, case where the uncle kidnapped her, raped her, murdered her, um, and they formed these special investigation units. Um, our unit runs off, I'm full-time and I have a part-time admin. Um, our annual budget is just over $160,000 a year. Um, the people we coordinate with are DCF, um, law enforcement, not only the Sheriff's Department, but Morristown PD, Stone PD, um, Vermont State Police, um, Mental Health, um, the same nurse at Copley Hospital. Um, I actually brought brochures about what we do and what our unit does is I used to be a um, home child care provider and I was a mandated reporter. I made a report. Um, law enforcement would come out in uniform, try to interview a child that as soon as law enforcement walked in in uniform, they wouldn't say a word. DCF worker would come in and interview. Um, they learned that the process didn't work. Um, I used the example, I had a three-year-old that came into my program with a black eye, told me mom did it, made the report, and the two people came in, tried to interview, got nowhere, the child went home that night. Um, fast forward to today, when an intake comes in, it goes to DCF, it comes to us, and I coordinate with DCF, law enforcement, um, a victim advocate from Clarina, 
mental health, and we all come in our center as a team, the child is interviewed once, and we have a video recording system, so it's audio, video. Um, that video is burned, it's for the state's attorney, it's for the lawyers, it's for everyone. The goal with our process is a child or an adult sex assault case, they're interviewed once and we're not re-traumatizing them over and over and over by law enforcement investigating, DCF investigating, state's attorney or lawyers having more questions. Um, so it's really a, it's a great model. And we're one of 12 units around the state. Every county has a special investigation unit child advocacy center um, embedded. So we're probably one of the few states um, that have coverage for the whole state of Vermont. Any child that, that needs to be interviewed, they have a unit that can interview them like this. So what we're looking for town funding for is, like I said, our budget is just over 160000 a year. We get um, almost 101000 state funds. We get a little bit of uh, federal funding and it is really strict money um, for our program cost, rent, utilities, um, and what we are looking for funding for is training. We have a big team, our budget's small. Um, last year, I think it was like $1,700 a year to train our team. Um, law enforcement and DCF, anybody that interviews um, the victims has to be certified in forensic interviewing. Um, it means they're trained to come in, build a relationship with that person, you know, ask them, what do you like to do, what do you do today, build a relationship, and then get into the tough questions. And then go back to that discussion to wrap it up and not have them leaving feeling like they just spilled their guts, the worst thing that has happened in their life. Um, so law enforcement has to be trained in um, basic forensic interviewing, DCF needs to, um, and then after that, a year later, it's advanced but we do continue training, um, and that's what we're looking for funding for, is to this continued training, um, and also to get out and do prevention work, because we're not doing enough prevention. Um, Loyal County, um, our last fiscal year that just ended, um, June, we had 109 accepted cases in Loyal County, and that is strictly um, child sexual abuse, um, serious physical abuse and neglect, and um, adult sex assaults. Um, so out of those 109, 102 were children, seven were adults in the Moyle County. And we know it's very underreported. You have quite a workload then, don't you, really? We do have a workload, and that's why I'm here trying to ask, do I need to get signatures? I actually sat at the BFW at their Christmas in July yesterday and got four signatures. Um, spent four hours there just because I, I was like, where am I getting Johnson? Um, I've sent Heather out a few times. Um, it's not that people aren't supportive of us. It's going out and saying, are you a Johnson resident? Are you a Waterville mm -hmm. resident? Um, in my own community, I live in Morrisville. I would have an easy time to, to go around. Um, but when it's not the community that you actually live in for me, um, it's taking chances, going and setting up somewhere um, maybe going knocking door to door. Um, but that's why I'm here, because I have a heavy workload as far as um, I do case coordination, I do the grant reporting, I do all the financials. Um, so it's really, it's a small unit with a lot to do. <laughs> How many signatures So this would actually be on your next year's? Because this would be going into the next right. year's town report. Yeah. You know, we, we can dispense with the signatures for the petition. Anybody else? I won't put it on next year and dispense and not bother with the signatures. Okay, we've got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? I'm in favor of helping her with getting the signatures and making the connection. True. I would agree with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I got no hesitation about signing it. And, and because we've required it of everyone else who's come before us, I just, 
I don't think it's fair to all of them mm -hmm. that we didn't require them to do it or, you know, give them the same opportunity. Um, and, you know, like in our email that we had, uh, Johnson has always been historically very generous. I, I don't think there would be a problem with the voters approving the allocation, uh, but they will have questions, mm -hmm. and, and rightly so. It's their mm -hmm. money, you know. Uh, and the way this works is after the first year, you'd be a standalone article. And if the voters approved it any follow-on year, as long as you didn't ask for more money, it would just get rolled into our budget. That's the way we've done it with all of the uh, tax exams. Mm -hmm. And I, I, for one, am not in favor of not going our historical route. But the point, Mr. Chairman, I would drop my motion. Uh, well, the motion's on the floor. And it was second. second, and so I'm going to withdraw it. Okay. The second, we have to agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I could make suggestions, uh, you know, like the Sterling Market, that's typically a place standing outside that people you know, head petitions stand and, and, uh, and solicit signatures. Uh, people are very, um, I think they're very uh, uh, receptive to signing in, as well as you could put a petition down here in the office and we allow some people to sign it from there. Do they have to be on the same petition? Can they be, you know? 125, right? 15. 15. 115. Do you have a petition with each man? I do. I yeah, carry, I, yeah, absolutely. So, we'll we'll tonight. Tonight, um, we, there was a, every Monday night, we have a bread oven event down in the field. Mm -hmm. We can bring a, a petition next week Excuse to me, that. Uh, there are 30 people there that are Johnson residents that would absolutely sign it. And the, the great thing with getting them to sign it ahead of time is we get a chance, you get a chance to say what you are and right. why this is important in the community. We just think the, the work that you do, uh, years ago I went to an open house uh, mm -hmm. there at um, SIU and it was just so impressive mm -hmm. um, how it's set up and how thoughtfully it's set up and how comfortable you can imagine, you know, you can imagine the, the police officer going to a child's house and interrogating. And think of like a child now going into sort of almost a nursery school setting where they have the toys, it's really comfortable. Um, and they've got Our law enforcement's plain clothes. Law enforcement's plain clothes. Mm -hmm. And they've got microphones and cameras set up in strategic places that are not, it's just, it's just really impressive what you do. And, and of course the work, you're two children, I mean, so the more that we can talk about it to, at, Tuesday, at the Red Oven, at Tuesday Night Live, at you know, the studio center and get some, some signatures there, mm -hmm. um, the more you can have core people that are going to come to the microphone and support it on that meeting day. So. And what I tell people is unless you use our services, you probably don't know about us because mm -hmm. until I applied for this position, I didn't know we had it in mm -hmm. Loyal County and I've been here for yeah. 30 years. Um, mm -hmm. And that's part of our problem too with with getting funding for the sheriff's department and for for the detective's position that he works so much with you and so much of the work that he does is around child sexual abuse or sexual crimes um, and that's not necessarily always on the front page of the newspaper but he's really busy with those cases and um, so when it comes to town meeting day we're trying to catch up and educate and explain to people you know. right so if if you can give me a copy of the petition, I'd be happy to. Absolutely. And what I'll do is I have brochures and, and um, Yeah, so maybe some and brochures and something. I mean, maybe Brian could make copies, and those of us here would be happy to solicit for you could uh, you know, help you with that. You get those signatures fast. Yeah. You know, Carol, you got Alex Lee And equally important is some representative there on town meeting because there will be a lot of questions from voters and the, the name is going to be questions of will we already give X number of dollars to the Memorial Sheriff's Department? Right. Why should we give more for this? And mm -hmm. Just explain the differences it would be very uh, beneficial. And what I explained to Nat too is um, we have a passing grant, um, a law enforcement grant because these cases do consume 
um, a lot of time and energy. It's not go in there and ask questions quickly. It's some interviews can be three hours long to build that relationship with a child before they'll say anything. Um, so we actually have a law enforcement grant. Um, law enforcement are obligated to investigate these cases. It's their job, but to be part of our team and come to our monthly meetings and the coordination and to give us the, the, the data we need um, to get our grants, um, we give each of the departments 20,000 a year, which is nothing for their time of their commitment um, to giving us the data we need sitting in a monthly meeting um, to talk about these cases. And what we do is we track the cases from the time they come into our unit and they stay on my log until prosecution. So every single month I can say, what about this? What about this? What about this? And they're not getting lost. Mm -hmm. um, in the pile or forgotten about because they come to the meeting every month and talk about these cases. So it's huge compared to other cases. I think we, I'm sort of feeling guilty for asking you to, to do it this way, but I, as they were pointing out, it really is important that our people understand what this is about because there is this helter-skelter police funding mechanism between the state police and the sheriff department and the municipals. And we're always running into questions of, is this money, you know, couldn't we do it better for less with somebody else? Uh, and so, I, to avoid this being thrown into that question, it would be good to lay a groundwork. And we know that we, we could, at one point, to myself, when Todd was there, we had what was called a stop grant and it supported a full-time law enforcement. Um, Lamoille County is probably one of only or maybe two units where we share law enforcement. Um, most of the units have one dedicated law enforcement for their unit that sits in their unit um, and investigates all the cases. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have a unique model here. So you're helping to pay part of the detective's salary? So what? You're helping to pay part of the detective's salary? We. No. The 20000 is to get the commitment that they're coming to these me our meetings every single month and providing that extra um, support service to these families. But you're paying that to the Warren County Sheriff's Department? Yes. It's like yes. a retainer. Mm -hmm. Huh? It's like a retainer. Technically. Yeah, kind of. But it seems like you get a lot out of that 20000 We get a lot. Um, if they if they broke their hourly the above and beyond their normal job for that, um, it doesn't, it wouldn't cover it. Um, each of the departments has one detective, Morristown has one detective, and really these DCF child abuse cases are priority. They have to be responded to within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not, you can't wait a couple days um, somebody needs to respond. The hospital calls and says we have a victim of rape in here. Somebody needs to respond then. Um, yep. And I worked, I've worked in early ed for 20 years. Um, I went to be kids in Morrisville um, and did home child care before then. And I tell everybody the team Lamoille County has, the multidisciplinary team, is the best team I have ever worked with. Um, they will challenge each other, they get along, they're there for each other. If somebody has a question, they don't hesitate to call another detective and say, what do you think, or can you help me with this interview? Um, I have to say that Lamoille's team is the best team I've ever worked with. And when I go to meetings, they say, how do you get everybody at the table every month? Every month, we usually have about 15 people at our table, mm -hmm. which is rare. Mm -hmm. So we have, we're lucky, very lucky. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody get anything else? No. Thanks for coming. Thank you. It's great Thank thing you. to do. If you believe yeah. that, we'll take care of it. Yeah. We'll do okay. one from the office and then we'll I'll give a couple out to the okay. people who are awesome. willing to okay. circulate. Somebody can let me know. There's the business card. Here's information about what we do. Thank you. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to call me, email me. What's Thank your last name? Pat Thank you. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. Gould Hill Sewer. Yep. So uh, Kevin Lundway has approached us. Uh, he has a kind of unique situation up on Gould Hill. Uh, he has sewer, uh, village sewer currently to his property. 
Uh, he'd like to have the option of subdividing his property and having sewer to the new subdivision. The problem is that the new subdivision, uh, depending on how it was drawn, it would likely end up outside the village and exclusively inside the town. Uh, so it wouldn't be part of an existing sewer service district. Uh, he is the current town sewer service agreement allows us to amend it to include um, new properties uh, as long as the village and the town both agree. Uh, the village has asked if the town would be interested in extending the sewer service to this area and providing the sewer allocation out of our total allocation. What's the allocation going to be? Uh, relatively small. It'll be a single family home. Okay. The, the sticky point is it's not within our established sewer district. And, you know, there was a lot of due diligence on where we had a sewer, a townwide sewer district, where it was at, why it was there, and where we wanted it to go. We have to be very cautious of. Uh, just approving some site that's outside of that sewer district. Uh, prior to having a sewer district, designated sewer districts, we had approved certain uh, extensions into the town beyond the village limit, and then denied others, and it did get us into a, a lawsuit, just as a cautionary note. Whatever we do, we're gonna make sure we don't get an attorney involved. <laughs> Didn't we, um, uh, uh, Kevin came to see me, he was the first person back at 9 o'clock when I came back from vacation, you know, <laughs> with a select person question, and I told him to go see Brian, but my recollection is that of the, the, of the two questions that we asked the Planning Commission to address the first being Fourth Glass Road. The second was to look at what areas of the community we might want to uh, revise or uh, put into a, a revised sewer service area. We had some discussion about that. Uh, I haven't received a report from the Planning Commission about that. I don't think they've taken it up. I think they've been uh, pretty well devoted to. Uh, the class four roads. I, I would, when they finish up the class four roads, I think this is a, a good subject for them and this is a good example of why it is. And we had talked with the village, you know, they seemed on board with wanting to come up with a kind of a future standard for how do we extend village sewer into the town. Walter made it very clear quite a while back that they wanted as much as they could get. Well, they wanted to trade uh, our signing off on East Johnson in exchange for the, this. And East Johnson is now signed off and we can move ahead. Right. I mean, I think personally that the Gould Hill makes sense because a good share of it is in the village. So having that whole hill as a new town-wide sewer district, it might make sense. But I think somebody needs to look at it and, and do the due diligence just so we don't get ourselves into any litigation issues. Yeah, we need a, an established process of how do we make the decision whether who's included and who isn't. And this would include, you know, if... You know, well, within the village, the village could extend there, but under the current ordinance. But if we're going to go into the town, we would have to have a capacity allocation and how to deal with that. So I think you know, for the community, moving that ahead would be a big process. It would be a wonderful thing to have, have available because it's, it's got location, location, location. It just doesn't have sewer. <coughs> so the thoughts to kick it over to the planning are they in a big hurry? Yeah, that's the timeline. <laughs> uh, I don't think Kevin exactly has a specific timeline, but he would like us to move on it kind of as fast as we can. But there's only 
so fast we can move on something like this. Yeah, I, I think that that I don't know Kevin well, but I think his general understanding of the amount of time it can take for government to move on something is why he's pushing for this now, is that he knows it. He's not pushing for us to give him an answer tomorrow. He's pushing for us to start the process. Yeah, that march along to a final decision. Uh, he wants us to get going. Well, we don't mind getting going as long as we have a good plan. Yeah. Right. So, Locks. planning commission? Yeah. Okay. It sounds like they're almost done with the fourth class road, so we yeah. can just start. This would be a good project. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. Thank you. Uh, Johnson's Farming Garden. Thank you, Letter. So the Historical Society is drafting a letter to send to Alan LeHoulier, thanking him for the donation of the lift that we used when we power washed the Holcomb House. Uh, I was wondering if the select board would like to send a companion letter. I've got a pretty rough draft of one, but not to the point where I'd actually want to send it out. Um, so I, if I could draft it and then have the board stop by during the week to sign it, that would be. Everybody? Yep. Yes, great. Yeah. Where the total cost come to, by the way? You know? I don't remember off the top of my head. Do you, Rosemary? Are we kidding about it? Without the lip? Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, the price was pretty high, even though, though we didn't have to pay for a lift. So we're lucky we didn't have to pay for a lift. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It does look a lot better, though. For sure. Yeah, it does. But unfortunately, some of that vinyl is yellow. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't look too good. Even still, yeah, I noticed some of it. It looks a lot better, but there is still some. Yellow tint to it. Next thing you know, we're going to have to decide that place. <laughs> is it it's aluminum siding or vinyl? Well, I think it's vinyl. It's supposed to be vinyl. Vinyl is vinyl. Okay. Uh, request for dust control. All right. I will be recusing myself from discussion or voting on this. However, uh. I'll still continue chairing if there's no objections. I just would not vote or participate. All right, I apologize, I don't have the copy of the letter in your packet, but uh, we received a letter uh, requesting um, dust control on Draglot Road. This is a class four road where we would normally not provide dust control. It's past our class three section. Uh, the resident there has uh, COPD and needs is experiencing some difficulty with the the dust uh, on the roadway, and they'd like us to do a treatment of the uh, chloride. I'm pulling up the letter here, but that's pretty much the. There's not a whole lot more information. Mm -hmm. We've no, we normally never do that. We, our current policy is, is not, we don't do it. No right. maintenance on platform. And so, no matter, even the condition of an individual, I think that it would open up a can of worms that somebody else would say, oh, I, I've got emphysema and I need my section done. And then somebody else could, come off and say, I need it. I don't think we need to get ourselves in this kind of a mess. I think we need to stick with our current policy and not do it. The only thing I could think to help accommodate would be to come up with an estimate of what it would cost to do that and ask if the citizen would pay for it. I can't imagine it would be. I don't think it would be too much. It's, especially if we're, it, it's on the corner, it's uh, not a particularly wide road. You know, we miles. wouldn't be doing a, uh, necessarily the whole road we could do. 
so many feet, well, I can work with Brian and get a cost estimate of what it would. I think you have a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I, because he has a health concern and uh, because it is reasonably accessible, it sounds like it's reasonably accessible by our trucks mm -hmm. that they'll be in the neighborhood perhaps anyway. Yeah, this is Drag Up Road uh, right up uh, yeah. Gould Hill uh, to spur out. Uh, that if he's willing to pay for uh, labor and machine time and, and uh, the materials, I think that would be true. That should be formalized in a motion. Uh, what is our, uh, I wonder if there's an attorney in the room that can tell me the downfall of what I just said. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I, have, I uh, if I have a back problem and I have trouble plowing, and what conditions will we then for fees become a contract provider of services? Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> I want to do this, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm always worried about us charging a fee for something that a private business could do. Oh. Uh, that we could be, we could find ourselves in competition with private individuals who do a similar service that we're undercutting uh, inadvertently, but. That's true. I think we could indicate that we'd be, if they could find someone to do that and hire them, they, they would submit, a, they'd have to submit a permit to do work on our roads, right. but, you know, we understand their situation. And we're not going to charge for a permit. No, this would fall under Class 4 road maintenance, so mm -hmm. uh, based on the directive from the board previously that we won't, don't want to charge fees for right. road maintenance. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to formulate that into a motion? Okay. Just give it to them as an option. Yeah. yeah. Sounds, Sounds like good. consensus. An option that they get somebody else to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that uh, they can get a permit from us, so they can move into the town. We'd like to see the end of the road. Yeah. No cost to the town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Health officer recommendation. All right. My term as health officer, deputy health officer, is up. Oh, if the board would like to reappoint me as deputy health officer. So moved. Second. A motion is second. Any other discussion? Well, I wanted to do it, but. Well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you're feeling hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I'll take it. You know, <laughs> do you, how do you find the, the job? Uh, it is useful for me to have the deputy health officer status most of the time. Um, you know that Sharon and Tracy are only available so many hours so it's useful for me to have it. Yeah. Um, Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Please never resign. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've got the Amended noise, the skate and bike June jam has now become the July jam um, for July 20th. It's not this weekend, it is this weekend. Yeah. It might be changing again. Um, Motion to approve the noise waiver in the skate park. Second. Any conditions? None. We have motion and second. Any discussion? Just an amendment of the original one. So. Yeah. Okay. All in favor signify saying aye. 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 As opposed? Okay. So I will amend the one that you've already approved and signed. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, LCPC reappointment. So we reappointed Duncan to the board of directors of the Loyal County Planning Commission. Uh, we also need to reappoint for the Transportation Advisory Committee. Uh, that would be myself with Brian Krause as an alternate. And while we're at it, we should 
reappoint for the Brownfield Committee, which would be Doug Moldy, with myself as an alternate. What's the board's pleasure? So move for the full slate. Okay. Got a motion, we got a second. Any other discussion? I got a quick one. Just on the on the TAC. Yep. Um, I wanted to, can we get a report back or are there meeting minutes? Public? Sure. I, um, a couple times we've referred things to say, well, yeah, the payments, uh, we want to refer things to the TAC, but I think we do, but we never really hear back on just sort of how it, how it was received or what sort of priority those concerns got. So okay. I'd love it if we could get. Yeah, I can send that back. Um, would you like a little bit more of a discussion about how the attack works and how we, how things elevate from uh, our local consideration up to the state priorities? Yeah. Okay. Um, we're making very good time, so I don't think this is going <laughs> to throw us off. So uh, when what the state does is ask the county, uh, the county for Vermont, to assign local priorities, uh, and this goes into their formula for how they determine state priorities and what projects get funded. Uh, these are state-related projects, so these are mostly paving projects. It also includes bridges of spans greater than 20 feet. <coughs> um, so the, and, and those are under two separate tracks. Um, what we do at, for our input is uh, we have representatives from all the towns in the Loyal County, and we discuss about uh, where's the greatest need and what we see locally we assign on a ranking system we get to rank it varies from year to year how many we get to rank uh, we usually include a couple that were a couple more areas of concern than we're able to give official rankings to you know it'll be assign a rank of one through eight for eight projects so we'll rank the eight projects and then we know that there's a couple other that are coming up and so we'll include those in our report to the state uh, just to make sure that the state knows a little bit more about what's happening locally. Uh, then the, those go into the state mechanism for funding, which uses a lot more metrics than we have. We're, we're one small piece in how the state decides their funding priorities, but I think it's a pretty Im important piece. Uh, it's, this is how we have local contributions into state priorities on transportation projects. Um, we share that with everybody else in Memorial County. Uh, we've got a very good group working together on this where we're assigning projects pretty fairly. Um, you know, when somebody's got a, an issue about, you know, uh, we had a, a bridge out in Eden, uh, bridge out in, in Eden, and so, you know, we didn't have any trouble moving that up because that was a state project um, you know, it, it's gone it's gone very well uh, I'm happy to serve on that committee and make those recommendations uh, the other issues that we deal with are you know this a lot of the work that I brought to you about the uh, municipal road general permit and the uh, road and bridge standards came out of this committee uh, so that that's pretty it, it's a good resource for, for us mm -hmm. as a candidate for one of these positions I'm going to recuse myself <laughs> <laughs> okay well, that's great yeah I just feel like our send us when you have a list of recommendations or you know just periodic yep. updates great. yeah I'd be happy to. Cool. Uh, I like your attention to detail. That's good. Keeps us on. Track. Yeah, it teaches us. It teaches us. Okay, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Custodian position. All right, so there's been, I don't know if you've seen a couple of these. There's been some amendments, but you've got two pages for you, a job description 
and then the one that just says Town of Johnson Custodian is going to be the job posting. So we'll review the job description first. Um, you know, this is kind of using the format that I'm trying to update our uh, pretty much all of our uh, job descriptions to. Uh, it's, I think, fairly standard for uh, what we'd like to see for a custodian position. Uh, recently, I added the town and village garages to this. Uh, based on feedback from uh, the village and uh, our town garage. Um, that's pretty much the job description. The posting has a little bit more discussion to it. For the posting... And we're going to... They don't clean their own garage? Our garage actually... The garages are, are kept quite clean and the cleaning custodial duties would be like the bathroom and the break room. They wouldn't be out in the uh, mechanic shop or any place else. In, in the past they had cleaned it themselves. Um, but if we're hiring a new custodian to do more work, they'd like us to send somebody over there to do it. We would... Uh charge out a rate to the village? That, yes. Um, I suppose that's, this doesn't fit well with either, but we're investigating the joint employee positions and how to handle that at the same time that we're hiring this new custodian position. This new custodian doesn't necessarily warrant being a, uh, a joint employee, whether it's whether we keep joint employees for the rest of the office staff or not, uh, we could pretty easily handle this as a town employee uh, where we report so many hours to the village uh, for reimbursement. Will this be an employee or a uh, contract? Uh, that we get into the job description or the posting for. Uh, that I'm writing it as an employee, but when we post for this, I'm going to include language that we would be willing, that we would entertain uh, contract proposals. Okay. How many hours a week is this job? Uh, Rosemary, how many hours a week is it right now? Probably about four hours. It doesn't include the library. Yeah, it doesn't include the library, but it does include the town garage and it's very little time at the town garage um, so we could add this you know it would be I want to say the library would be more time consuming than this building is they see, they're pretty heavy traffic don't you think the hours should be posted on that makes perfect sense The Probably library, our square footage for the buildings too. For the library, there's only there's a very specific time. There's only like two times in the week where someone can go in and clean. Yeah. Because of their hours of operation. So. So that should be identified in, in the job or not job description, but the posting. The posting. So that yeah. Yeah. Any, anybody submits a bid, we have to know that. So on the one that's Tom Johnson custodian, when you're seeking part-time seeking a part-time custodian for municipal offices and the public library, don't you think you should add the town and village garages? It's here. It's I missed I got it in one sentence, but I missed it in another. And I think that when you town and village garages, I think you should be, you know, I'd look and say, my God, the person's gonna think they're cleaning oil and stuff. Probably should specify the rooms that, that the break room and bathroom. Yeah. All right. I like Kyle's suggestion of if there's a pigeonhole I have to fall in, tell me the map. 
So why are we, how, how are we, how are they paid previously when we had a custodian? We or us had a custodian? When we had a custodian, it was a joint position. I think it was just 50 50, wasn't it, Rosemary? Um, and they, our custodian did just this building. Um, well, it did town garages too. Yeah. Rhonda Gilchrist used to. Rhonda did the. Yeah. Okay. She used to clean the break room and the bathroom with the bedroom? Yeah. Okay. And, and then Ian's been doing it since the yep. Gilchrist got done. And so the addition is the library. Yeah. The library needs a new position. Their employee is, or has retired, and uh, they need a new custodial position. So that'll be totally our expense, or are we going to collect from them? Uh, they've been managing it so far, but I, I imagine since we pay the library, they were paying for it out of our contribution to the library. Mm -hmm. So we, bookkeeping-wise, would probably be easiest for it just us, us to absorb the cost. Yeah, I know the library is very desperate for this position to get filled. Like so how many hours is it? Yeah, it's pretty Kyle, how many hours do you think it would take to clean your library? Uh, I, I don't know. I didn't. Um, I just saw Jean tonight, and she she mentioned that the people that um, the Latiris who clean the Morseville Library or the Hyde Park Library do a very good job. They have a very flexible schedule, and she would. She feels very comfortable having them clean the library. I'm not sure how many hours, I think maybe somewhere between two and four, I would think. But, um, Morseville's much bigger. Morseville's much more. bigger. Mm -hmm. Should have taken a lot no. of space. How much time, Rosemary, was for this building? You said four hours? So we're going to be looking at 10 hours maximum, probably. I think that that's in the ballpark of what I'm imagining. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to stick that in 10 hours maximum, probably. Yeah, uh, I'll do a little. I'll get some square footage of areas that they're covering. Uh, so that to that point, the the library board will have a seat at the table and make a decision on who to hire. And yes, that seems like a good thing to do. Is this going to move forward pretty quickly once? That's the plan. Um, okay. I, I, I suppose it would be very helpful for the library if we would kind of explicitly give them permission to work with the Latiris until this position is filled. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, that way they, they're not so going say, without. So you're saying down there that the library should be at the table when we make the decision who we're going to hire? Yes. So what if the library wants one particular individual and the select board wants another? Uh, we work it out like we do. <laughs> we work together to come to a decision. Okay. 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 Sound good? Thanks, Brian. Right. Committee for managing the community of it. We, uh, this is a little bit of a placeholder. Uh, we don't have any real update to provide for, or we do. I have an update. Um, number one, Monday Night Pizza is really tasty, and uh, it's a really nice event. To anyone. Um, Jasmine has put together with her group um, sort of a, a loose um, mission statement, and her group's going to get together and solidify that. She's also submitted uh, some names for appointment to the committee. And I, can, uh, I just got these from her tonight. Okay. Okay. Great. So she, she recommends, and people have stepped up. Uh, Jasmine Harris, Jen Harris, Ray Kinnia, K I N I A, Luke Gladney, G L L A T T Y. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Sophia Ferrard, yeah. Charlotte Rosenkrantz, R O O Z E K R A N S, Liam Murphy, and someone named Kyle Luce. <laughs> so I make uh, the uh, motion that we appoint these people to the new credit committee. Did I count seven or eight? I got eight. I think I would act more as like a liaison, not actually be on the committee, if okay, that's okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that so so sort of report seven. back. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not really Kyle. <laughs> okay, got a motion to nominate the slate minus Kyle. Second. I have a second. Any more discussion? I had suggested last time that someone, that we have conditioned on the committee that someone who's on this be either on the rec committee she said one of them was on Tuesday Night Live committee. Sophia. Uh, Sophia. Yeah. Sophia. Yeah. Okay. And so, with I would suggest an amendment that Sophie be the person who is satisfies that if we have that requirement that satisfies it, so that we try continue it. She has the Tuesday Night Live seat on the committee, and uh, I, I believe Jen Harris is going to um, join the recreation committee, so she could fill that role. Mm -hmm. I would think. You're making that a formal motion to yeah. amend? Yeah. Okay. We have an amendment Friendly. to identify Sophia as a Tuesday Night Live rep on the Red Oven Committee. Do we have a second for the amendment? Or do we accept it as a friendly amendment? Who's your second? I will. You accept that as a friendly amendment? If the main motion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll accept it. Any other discussion? Got all that, Donna? I think so. <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Well, shares. We have a contract. Did you sign that last time? We signed it last time. This should have been, my apologies, this should have been the monthly update. Oh, okay. Which you received by email. Uh, we are starting the budget discussions with the Loyal County Sheriff's Department. Um, very early days, we had one meeting, uh, Nat and myself attended, and very insightful about the uh, amount of time and effort that goes into all of their patrols, but Johnson especially, we, we learned quite a bit. Yeah, we should share that PowerPoint around. Yeah. It was really interesting. I don't think I actually got that PowerPoint by email, but I will. I got it. I think. If you got it, then I probably did also. And I. Yeah. So you're saying Johnson's getting a better deal than everybody else? I wouldn't say that we're getting a better deal than anybody else. I, I think that everybody's really uh, getting their money's worth up from the sheriff's department. Okay. You know, that uh, they're doing quite a bit of man hours uh, on the ground in Johnson and uh, especially the investigative work, which would be hard for us to get any other way. They also had numbers showing that they're ticketing, they're pulling over more cars than Morrisville and stuff. And they're ticketing at a higher proportion than Morrisville and stuff, um, which is Good information. It's a good comparison. Yeah. Okay. And more still have more patrol hours on the road. I mean, they've got a couple of cars out all the time. Yeah. So. We're not getting the revenue that that other town is in Vermont. <laughs> we are not. <laughs> he wants to get reelected. <laughs> I'd love to see that. So you're going to I'll, I'll send the PowerPoint around. Okay. Um, Thank you. I'll make sure if I have it or if I don't, I'll get it from Nat and yeah. send that around to And uh, for anyone else out there interested, I can share that as well. None of it's uh, proprietary or sensitive information. Okay. Uh, no updates in particular on the light industrial park. 
Uh, we should hear back any day now about the Northern Border Regional Commission grant. Uh, that is our biggest single source, uh, so that one's very important to, uh, for us to get. And that's what we need to even start going forward. Uh, we can do, if we get the EDA grant, we can do the uh, final engineering, uh, updating the plan for the road to current road standards and water management standards. Uh, the big one is I'm pretty sure that the road designed 10 years ago was not gonna pass current stormwater requirements. Uh, so we need to do a final engineering study on it. The Northern Borders Grant is going strictly for construction. Uh, and the EDA is the, which we're also seeking uh, and have not. Can we expect any day now to be hearing? Uh, July was when we could, we might hear in July. Okay. Um, I do have, Uh, a little bit for the old business. Um, I've been playing phone tag with the uh, Restorative Justice Center about setting up the training uh, for the select board. I still hope to do that in September as the select board indicated. Uh, would be a good time. So that we're still on target for that. Um, and I have a meeting next week uh, with a soil engineer about the gravel pit. Okay. We should probably we can cross off the power washing. Oh yeah. Old business should include merger study too. You know that. We don't see anybody moving forward on that too fast. Uh, we sent letters to, uh, for the merger study this last week. Okay. Uh, so. Actually, that should move up as a regular. You want that as a regular item? Yeah, every week just or every month they have an update. I mean it's almost a year and a half since we first had our charge for this. Um, the way it's going, it's been two years. So uh, we sent uh, just a, a, an update of where we are on that as long as we're talking about okay. it. Um, Nat and um, Scott provided a blueprint of questions and conversations to have with the uh, three uh, folks that submitted proposals originally. Uh, we wrote letters based on their input, just neatened it up a little bit, sent out the letters last week uh, from Meredith and myself, and uh, we're following up with phone calls. Uh, I would check my calendar, but we've got a, a calendar date to follow up with phone calls. Um, we've heard back from one of the folks already, uh, not with a new proposal, but just some clarifying questions about what exactly do we mean and what are we looking for. But, um, Thank you, Nat, by the way. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I'll keep the board informed of any progress there. Do you have any sense? Like I said, we, we heard back from the one, uh, and that was just clarifying questions about, um, you know, what we meant by uh, you know, the questions we asked them about expertise and cost and what we were looking for. And It'd be nice to have some kind of a resolution on this before following. A lot of it right now depends on them getting their answers back. Well, I'm sure they're going to get them back pretty quick. It's moving. going to be looking yeah. for some work. I'm sure it won't be long. Maybe a little bit of luck will have some good next week. Possibly. Yeah, I hope so. And we'll have to join the meeting. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. Then it'll move. One way or another. Yeah. 
Okay, anything else for your old business? No. You had something on stormwater? Yes. You've got a quick fact sheet on the three acre stormwater permitting rule. Uh, this is a very brief overview. I've got some other documentation uh, that I can send. It's actually a very good seven days article on uh, the three acre rule. Um, basically what this is, is older construction that's over three acres that was previously permitted um, is going to have to re-permit. Uh, this, th there's a draft list of places that will be affected throughout the state. There are several in Johnson, uh, mostly schools, you know, the college, the uh, elementary school, uh, the two that I can think of offhand, and the Katie Wynn uh, trailer park are all draft location. This isn't the final determination. Those folks are going to receive notices in the next week or two. Um, the full draft uh, and all of the language, the public comment period hasn't started yet. Uh, everything is still very early stages. Uh, so we're kind of learning as we go, but the board might hear from uh, probably right about four or five, but you might start hearing from folks about this. Uh, so you should be familiar, at least basically familiar with it. Um, well, people that private individuals are going to squawk about this. Probably, uh, it is a state requirement, and we have. But it's they're going to go back and say, "Hey, I followed the rules back in 2002, and a deal was a deal." Now, yep. Now you're changing horses midstream, and you're making me go ahead and do more. Uh, I can see how it would be irritating to some people. Especially if they spend a lot of money in the first place. I read an article in the Free Press where it's going to cost millions of dollars in Burlington for yeah different, for settling ponds and different things for all, all sorts of developments. Burlington is going to be very badly hit. Um, this is any municipalities that have a lot of uh, parking lots, things like that, are really good targets for having to make updates and make changes too. Well, this is, um, this is like this very very fire in the beginning of the day of perhaps we can help it. Yeah, this is, uh, like it or not, this is one of the more effective uh, attempts at reducing the phosphorus load for the... Uh, Burlington needs to separate their, their stormwater from their sewers to, to start with. First, yeah. really, if they're gonna, that's one of the big problems down there. Is this gonna affect, or this will, the work we do on the Jewett property will have to comply with this now? It will, but it's very likely. Uh, a lot of the parcels in our estimated drawing um, mm -hmm. would be under three acres, but again, those are suggestions that's not you know we'll, we'll see what people actually how people are actually using it and who who's moving in and what they want but any new development is going to have to comply with this but as we went for an act 250 permit that's on the whole project those individual lots I mean we're gonna have to comply with it we'll be we'll be creating a master plan right uh, to submit to the act 250 which will yeah, have to comply and it will include our estimates on what likely construction projects are going to be. Okay. Better be in the planning stages now than having done Yes, exactly. If we're better off now than we would. Yeah, uh, this isn't going to be especially difficult for new construction to comply with. It's going to be a beast for uh, people in existing, areas. Existing. Yeah. Yeah, where they've already committed to a certain amount of infill uh, and development, and now they have new requirements for their space. I think this is a recognition that instead of focusing, you know, they were landing on town roads and municipal sewer plants because they were easy targets, and this is more dispersed, and this is finally landing on the dispersed. Right. 
Yeah, th this is, like I said, th this is much more effective, but it is also much farther reaching and uh, going to touch on areas that they've tried to tried to avoid reaching and affecting. Uh, so uh, yeah, a few locations in Johnson, not too many on the draft list, uh, but there are a few. Uh, none of them municipal. Thank you. Uh, there was discussion at one point about whether gravel pits would be included or not, but they are not. So this is still draft form, but uh, we are our gravel pit is currently not going to be considered an impermeable impermeable surface. It shouldn't be. Well, gravel. most of them are. <laughs> I mean, if you have any kind of basin, to the water just disappears down through the soil anyway. So I mean, it's not like it's polluting the river. No, I, there was some discussion about what's the difference between gravel on a road and gravel in the gravel pit and compaction. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we regard it as very different, but uh, thankfully DEC is currently agreeing with us. Uh, and I don't expect that to change. I, I think that was just a discuss an early discussion item, but. We of that pit. Yeah. Yeah, we've been revegetating and uh, uh, reclamation on some of the unused sections. And, you know, kind of getting it. You know, I think pretty good management practices there. When are we ever going to get our conflict resolution training done? September. Uh, September's the goal for that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I've been playing phone tag, but uh, I, I still think that September's likely to work out. Okay. Agreement with the solid waste district? Yep. So our agreement to operate the uh, transfer station uh, with the regional solid waste is up. Uh, and so we need to, to sign a new agreement with them. Uh, we are currently, Nat had a, a good suggestion that we're currently dealing with uh, the emerald ash borer and uh, we will likely in the future be dealing with a decent amount of contaminated wood that we can't transport um, and disposal might be a little bit more difficult so if we could use their property or our property that they're managing uh, as a disposal site that could work out really well for us uh, they could roll it in with their the stump dump that they're currently operating, so I don't think it would be a big management burden on them. Um, but their stump dump, are they planning on allowing the whole district? Because I think we're the only one for the whole district stump dump here. Are they planning on bringing those ashes into Johnson? Currently, they're not planning on doing it at all. We're suggesting that maybe we should ask them to at least for Johnson, uh, if not a larger area, because there's no, right now there's no place to dispose of it. We need to designate a site to put wood that's cut. Uh, this is something we've been needing to do for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, but do we want to allow them to bring from other towns? No. But I, in looking at that, just looking at the it looks like that's a, we own a fair amount of land there. I don't know if we can use land that's out beyond what's currently plowed and, and used for their yard that we could, or if we would have to put a ring where the stump dump is, or if it would be a separate pile where it's dumped up. I was just suggesting it's a good place to get trucks in and out of, um, and there's a fair amount of yard space there. The probably open space where the, the dump is capped. What do they do with the stumps that go there? Just let them rot. They rot. Okay. Similar fate for the uh, ash? Depends who you ask. Yeah. Uh, there's some suggestion that the federal government is going to require the, uh, the, the wood to be chipped up into very small pieces, which would require uh, quite a large piece of equipment. 
to do that shredding. Um, mm -hmm. Very expensive piece of equipment. If um, it's on our property, would it be like a hazardous waste that we have to get rid of? Well, once it's once it's uh, no. Why couldn't the McNeil plant burn that after it's what's that chip? The McNeil plant can burn that after it's chipped, right? I don't know. I would suppose, or it could sit and decompose. Uh, once it's in a, a small enough diameter, uh, it's not susceptible to ash propagating. Well, huh. mm -hmm. I would think they just chip it up and burn it. They burn tons of wood every day down there. Where is it? The McNeil plant, Burlington. 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 Yeah. <coughs> We're currently in quarantine. You can't move it out of the state. Um, no, it'd be just being trucked to Burlington and burn, generating power. I think it's a great idea if we don't end up with that, you know, they're, they're completely filling the spot, you know. I don't know how much it's going to go in. I don't know. I think, it, I think it's a good idea if we can figure out if it goes in, how much would it be, you know, and would any of it leave, and if so, how? Is there anything in there proposed, or did they have a proposed contract? They don't have a proposed contract. Uh, right now, we don't have a proposed contract. If, where if we're going to ask for something, they're going to want something in return. Probably. Well, but somebody has to do this, and there could be federal money and other things available to them uh, for com for this. Yeah. Uh, it would be up to them to secure that money, but it's out there. We're not really asking them for anything. This is our land that we would be making. Plans to who would be offering that they're not paying anything to use that space, um, so we would be asking to use our own more informing. We'd be telling them that we're going to use our own land. Yeah, really? they they uh, had some pretty. Uh, it was a tough negotiation five years ago when they came in, and they were they had some pretty sharp demands of us that we did not give in to. Be careful that we're. If I remember correctly, they wanted us to plow. They wanted us to plow their sand, their yard. And that wasn't five years ago. That was. I think it's a five-year contract. I it was, believe it so. was four years because that it was a year in the contract they wanted. Because I was on the board then. That's right. They didn't notice the the small print that they had signed. I think it's a good idea. We we should investigate that. Mm -hmm. And you thought we were giving them a hard time. To, we, we're going to need a place to put this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I still think you were giving them too hard time. Really? Yeah. But I, I mean, I, there's a lot of land there. I don't know that, that we're really, that we're really crunched for real estate. I mean, we've got, can we move beyond what's currently being used for land? I guess that, that wouldn't infringe on their current space at all. Well, they're not using really that much space anyway. If you look at the map, we've got a lot of real estate there. Mm -hmm. you know, they, how much of that space is off limits to us? I'm going to have to investigate that a little bit more. Where the mound is, and they have their sampling tubes, I'm guessing. We'd have to coordinate uh, around right. that, but uh, and I don't know how much is dedicated. I, I don't know what the solid waste district has kind of exclusive use of. Uh, if we've given them the rights to more of the space and they're just using this part of it or, or how that works, I'm going to have to investigate that a little bit more. But just, I mean, there's quite a bit of real estate between where the transfer station is, where they're set up, and the composting facility. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It would need to be cleaned up and maybe built in a little bit for trucks, but there's, it just seems like there's a lot of space there. To, and it's a good place to throw the ash. Yeah, yeah. a lot of space. They're down on the Tatro property. Be about our only options. Mm -hmm. Beyond the town garage. I think anything you put on the Tatro property, you'll have to take off at some point in time. You do? Yeah. Forever. There's a lot there now I'd like off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're going to.
So I'm going to work on that that agreement. I just wanted to yep. kind of in, it was brought to my intention. I wanted to inform the board of the status and uh, make sure that we were on board with seeing that uh, that is the location for the uh, disposal of trees. The rest of the contract I'd really like to see remain the same. Yeah. Okay. It depends on how big of a pile you want on that stuff, too, you know. We got 2,000 ash trees. Yeah, that's a lot of trees. You know, you, have you ever seen, uh, you know, old sawmills that have had, you know, piles of sawdust and chips or whatever and bark and then it spontaneous combusts? Sometimes, you know, if you have, you know, you, you're talking about thousands and thousands of trees up there, all ground up, sitting on the ground, and then, then you have a potential possible hazard down the road. Well, Environmental kids hazard. Kids don't fall for it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, uh, the Emerald Ash Borer group here in Johnson is meeting again at the end of August the 29th. Uh, so I think some questions that we can bring back to them is what what happens to the material once we get it in this pot? Are we chipping it up? Are we moving it away? Are we? Yeah. Right, because we we need to know that because we don't want a pyramid up there of uh, even thousands of trees all ground up in a big pile. Uh, all I see is that turning into a, a major problem. This gets more and more complicated. It's only made it very annoying. So, yeah. so, so that big hole. I guess we're okay with that now. Yes. The Legion Field song. Uh, yeah. So, small group of us: myself, Jasmine Yuris, Sophie Barrar, Dean Huyer, Jackie Stanton. Um, we'd like to get the board's blessing to create a um, fairly large sign because it's a fairly large long statement of our inclusivity statement on um, basically on our own dime and time uh, to have temporarily displayed on the Legion field for the summer um, with the hopes of doing something more permanent with more planning and uh, for for the select board to look at and approve. So next to the sponsor signs? Um, I think they were thinking more propped up near the um, oven actually. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Uh, we were approached a while ago about the scoreboard and somebody interested in turning that into a mural uh, and that appears to have fallen through. On Old Mill Park? Nope, Legion no. Fields. Legion Fields. Yeah, I didn't see a scoreboard there tonight when I looked. Yeah, they're they're back against the tree line. Oh. And they're yeah. um, I don't know what condition they're 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 wood. It's wood, yeah. So I don't know what condition the wood okay. is, but I think if you primed them and painted the base okay. really well that it's a you know, We can trim the trees back from it and give it a little bit more breathing room to help dry it out and Okay. Yeah, because right now they're not visible at all from no, they're not. So, yeah. But okay. then we can, you know, they could be moved forward, you know, but just as a blank slate. Yeah. You know, that's a, an option, mm -hmm. especially if you're using your own. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, yeah. I guess we were thinking about something just to do, get done soon for the summer and then spend time really thinking about. Um, maybe a little more involved or permanent with board approval. So how big are you looking um, at? Well, Kate uh, Peatman, mm -hmm. Kate Westcott is um, volunteered to, to actually do the painting of the sign. So we're not sure how much space she needs <laughs> to, because it's, you know. It's quite a statement. It's quite a statement. So um, I don't think anything bigger than um, the Tuesday Night Live uh, um, painted sign that Cal did, that's sort of the backdrop of the bandstand right now. I don't know if you've seen that. It hangs sort of from the rafters. It's probably, I don't know, 
Could you get out of 4 by 8 sheet at the plywood? Maybe. Something like that. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. You okay with it? I would be fine with it on the scoreboard that's there already. Yeah. Okay. That's really an option. Well, the scoreboard's way down there. It's, yeah, it's not very prominent. I would the thing is, if it was on the scoreboard, it had to be bigger, and the letters would have to be bigger. Well, that so scoreboard is much bigger than a 4 by 8 Right, right. So if you had the whole scoreboard painted with it, you should be able to see it. I think it's a great idea, and I'm comfortable letting the volunteers sort out all of those details. Personally. Yeah, I'm kind of, I think we're thinking sort of phase one and phase Two, sort of phase one just to get something up because summer is quickly going away <laughs> um, doing something quick on an eight by four situation and then maybe next spring or summer doing something bigger and grander with with more discussion between us and us okay. so anyway but I, I'll definitely mention that as an option but my thoughts on it were that uh, if you're gonna Put it in a relationship to the bread oven. That is, you know, it ought to be really done artistically and, and well, and not be uh, just a four by eight take back Vermont sign on the bread oven type thing. Yeah, no, yeah. I. So, I mean, I'm using that as a uh, exaggerated right. example. But I, I, I think it ought to be there. Be, I, I, it's our statement. It ought to be where people can see that that's what we stand for, or the community has voted for. But uh, it ought to be done with respect to the when it's uh, where it's located. Well, the thing is, done. What what you're talking about is you know, just a first and second phase. And so, you know, the first phase is just going to be something basically temporary. You're talking about because if you if it was down by the, the bread oven all the time, it would obstruct the view of the bread oven all the time, and that's not your intention. And so, you know, if you want to have the one for this season, then go ahead and have your temporary one at the bread oven and then the permanent thing by next year. Yeah. And I know Kate is going to do, a, you know, we all know her. She'll do a good job. Going, the lettering is going to be beautiful. I think it's even as a temporary quick thing, it's going to look great. We're studying this too much. Just go ahead and do it. I think you get support. <laughs> I'll keep working on that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I just got one thing. I'm not sure if any, any of you were on copy of Karen Horn's email from the League of Cities and Towns, but they're basically uh, making themselves available to come to any select board meetings, mm -hmm. uh, talk about some of the priorities uh, that we might have for the league or what some of the things they're helping us with. I don't know. You know, I, I, Something that comes to mind for Johnson, maybe, and they've been a big advocate for it, is the uh, legal, legalization of marijuana, and and their really their lobbying effort has been okay. You know, it, it's going to happen, but make sure that towns have you know an opportunity to opt out and whatever the costs are for additional policing, yada yada yada. That you know the town should be made whole and that that sort of thing. So both the towns have the opportunity to opt in. Opt out. That's what I've always heard. Opt out. Yeah. That they were going to pass it for the whole state of Vermont. But then yeah. individual towns had the opportunity to opt out. Opt out. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the way it was at least proposed, but it obviously hasn't been. I wish it was your way. No, I think we, I mean, the same way liquor licenses. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's a good idea. But, anyways, there is that. Uh, invitation or that uh, proposal out there that if any board wants, any select board in the state wants them to come, they will come to a select board meeting. We should take advantage yeah, of it. Yeah, I think so too. Sure. If that's a consensus, I'll send an email back to her. Thanks. Okay, anybody got anything else? I, I actually just thought of two things. One, um, on Saturday, the Conservation Commission busted, but, and we're at Journey's End for like 
six hours chopping knotweed down from the bakes. Um, I helped for about two of those hours, but yeah, they did an amazing job. So if you see any of them, <laughs> I'm sure you give Don't them a big you. thank you. And second, that same day I went back and shot um, another uh, film thing with Stuck in Vermont, highlighting Journey's End, mm -hmm. and all the work that's been done there. So um, and that's airing July 25th. They're, they're doing a segment, a whole episode on swimming holes throughout Vermont. Um, and so they asked if we had any good ones in Johnson. I said, we sure did. Good positive PR for Johnson. Yes. Good. So anyway, July 25th. I got two nice ones in Morristown, too. Yep. Are we meeting on August 5th? Did we decide to skip it? We left that up in the air. Uh, what do you say? Are we meeting on August 5th or not? Because you're out of town. I'm out of town. Oh, I am too. And you're out of town. What was a possible issue that we might have before us? Uh, you could spend the time reviewing something that's going to take a lengthier discussion, like the dilapidated buildings, or um, you know, I might be able to arrange for uh, you know, if we had state rules like the three acre rule or something like that, I might be able to arrange for somebody to come in to do a training on something like that if you had questions about. Speaking of dilapidated buildings, how's that coming? Uh, we have to get together to discuss it. I uh, circulated the, uh, our current proposal and we have to kind of pick it apart a little bit, see what changes we want to make, and then advance it. Somehow the, the wording kind of got to the village like we were trying to dump it on to them. Uh, but that is not the case. And I talked no. to Scott last week at Tuesday Night Live and told him that we were bringing them on board, not that we were trying to drop it on them. And so um, I don't know how. Have you heard any more from the village about it? Or? No, I haven't. Okay. Uh, I think that they're... I told him, just as we have discussed, that, you know, a lot of the buildings which are considered dilapidated fall within the village, and they are seen the most. And, but I told him that we were not trying to drop anything on them at all. And it's a town, driven by the town. Thank you. Thanks. We are having a meeting Thursday. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You're going to chair. Yeah. And August, my suggestion is we don't have the August fifth meeting unless there is a need to schedule an emergency meeting for some reason. Okay, I'm good with that. A little bit of vacation. One meeting for the month. It's been a long time since we don't a meeting that night. If there's no other business, stand adjourned. Order no, record no. time. I didn't even order it till nine. Yeah. You got the double. I think I'm calling it. I said that I was going to have an interview question.